how to do uh, pixel shaders? Well, shaders are as obviously because of real-time graphics, for example, for VGA, you will always have different set of layers coming from different sources and you obviously want to compose it with them, so shaders are quite the, now the new standard way to compose it with video because the graphics card accelerated which means if you like for like if you want to blend uh, several layers of uh, high definition content uh, it, it's going to be very hard if you do it on uh, on the cpu and the, so the graphics card is really the, the new standard for all this type of image processing you can also do more advanced abstract graphics there's a lot of different application you can do standard image processing so yeah, I think if you have visual, you, not only compositing, but there's a lot of visual effects. Uh, if you look in the texture effects library in 4V, there's about uh, more than 60 different visual effects you can apply for image treatment, like uh, edge detection, uh, uh, unsharp masking, uh, a glow, there's a lot of different type of uh, blurring. There's lots, lots of different effects to apply for your video content. So it can be used for real-time graphics, but it can also be used for just like video rendering and compositing as well. We use VVV because they have a very nice shader interface, but you can easily take the concepts from the lesson and use it in any platform which supports shaders. So for example, Quartz Composer, Touch Designer, uh, any or your custom cinder, anything which supports shader, can <coughs> you will be able to apply it onto it. Uh, for this lesson, if you want to use the template that I will provide, you will need to have a 4V installed. So you need a <coughs> VVVV a Windows or a Bootcamp PC for if you're a Mac user, and you will be able to run the templates which you will be able to download from the website. So, before to start with the pixel shader, I will just give a quick introduction because we're gonna use, there's two types of shaders, there's the vertex shader, well, there's more than two types, but for this lesson I will go only to through two, which is vertex shader and pixel shader. I think vertex shader is a bit harder to get at the beginning, so we'll start with pixel shader. I'm gonna use it on the recording screen. Uh, basically, when you uh, 3D pipeline, you render triangles. So every part of, point of your triangle is called the vertex, and then you have a list of connections between those vertex, which are triangles. So the vertex shader will, will potentially process these vertices, the pixel shader will process pixels, basically. So it's like if you have an image like in Photoshop, you're going to process it pixel per pixel. Uh, vertex shader are used for uh, more like, well, for, you can use it for geometry, you can use it for light calculations, for 3D. <coughs> vertex shader is a very important part of it. So a lot of the light calculations are done in vertex shader, or you can do some uh, fancy graphics as well. Okay, so to start to explain a bit shaders, I'm going to show you a very simple setup. So as you see, that's like a very basic setup for pixel shaders. So what you have is like just a full screen quad here that you're going to turn to full screen. So we have a full screen quad and you see this template here is this piece of code which is the shader we have. So there's a few little bits that's a very basic template, which is normally enough to get you started. So let's have a look a bit on how it looks like. So you have here these defines, which are just pi, two pi, half pi. It's just uh, some values which we use very often for tri trigonometric functions. So it's always very useful to have. So you can see here is the vertex shader part which I will go in other lessons, but roughly it just takes the position and multiply it by the scale here. Mm -hmm. So it just really transforms the quad, which is normally this size, into a quad, which is this size. And it passes also the texture coordinate, which is something we're going to use a lot in the pixel.
pixel shader. So now you can see here you have the pixel shader unit which returns a color. So color is in R, J, B, alpha format. Minimum is zero and maximum is one. So for example, if I here I return one everywhere, so it's white. If I return here, I return zero. So you can see also 4B is very handy for this uh, prototyping because as soon as I change the value in my shader and save, it recompiles it and it's already running directly in real time. So there is a last part here which is called the techniques. So a te Rossi, when you have to render, you need to have one vertex shader and one pixel shader. So the technique will tell you, you can create several techniques, so it's a way of quite quickly switching. So for example, here you can see, here I got red, so I'm just going to call this PS underscore red. So you see now I need to attach PS red. And I'm going to my technique T red. So you can see it also updates here. So now let's say I want another technique which returns me blue. So I'm going to create blue. Yes, blue. And now I obviously need to create the little shader unit, which is called PS blue. And return some blue. So now you can see it here, it's updated so I can also switch the technique directly. The advantage of it is it's very fast because it's only functions. So it's like you can really have very quick switching between different methods of processing your picture. As you see, you, for the moment I've just used the static color. You have, what is, have to, you have to understand with the pixel shader is every single pixel going to go through this function. And you can see here, for example, I got the texture coordinates, which normally go from 0 to 1. So if I want to create, for example, a red gradient, instead of having a static color, I'm just going to say I want a gradient on the x-axis. So here now I got a gradient on the x-axis, so it goes from 0 red to maximum red on the right side. If I want to have it on the a vertical gradient, I can change it with p.y. So, <coughs> also, of course, I can use it as a grayscale. Okay, so now I have a, red, a grayscale gradient. So, let's now, for example, change a bit the way we're going to handle the thing. So, let's say I'm just going to create a line. So, I'm just going to change the name here. So, the, the, a very simple way to change the line is you're just going to create a little function with a sine wave, p dot x, and t, t, t. So, you can see for the moment it's doing exactly the same as the gradient because the sine function from 0 to 1 will not go through a full period. So we're going to also have a couple of little variables which are always useful to have, so we need a time. You can see also, as soon as I created this time variable here, it also appears here. So I, it means I can change now this parameter directly from here. We're going to want a frequency. And let's say, call it 20. Normally, when using gradient, a nice variable is scale, which we're going to use one. And we're going to use also often a power function, which is one. So now we have a nice basic, basic setup. Here, power. And now, when we going to, for example, now we can change this to the lips and multiply it by frequency. And now you can see the lines are changing. So instead of a float, I'm going to use an int. And you can see now you have a lot of vertical lines on here. 
So you can automatically change it. If you want to make them move, we saw we have this time here. So I'm just going to create a simple timer. So now we have this little timer, so you can see now our time is progressing. So it's just going to progress in a linear fashion. So let's make it a bit slower. And now, for example, we can just add a time function here. And speed up a tiny bit. speed up quite a lot. So now we have <coughs> our moving lines around. So of course you can create change back in the frequency and the time. You can change you know, your speed. If you want the lines on the other side you can just change it on the Y. So you prove that's a very simple way to do so. <coughs> You can quite easily create some very simple graphics, as you see, with very little bit of code.